please join in singing hymn number 941, O God Beyond All Praising, 941. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace and love of God our Father and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, to prepare our hearts to enter into the sacred mysteries, let us together call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven columns. She has dressed her meat, mixed her wine. Yes, she has spread her table. She has sent out her maidens. She calls from the heights out over the city. Let whoever is simple turn in here. To the one who lacks understanding, she says, come, eat of my food, and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness that you may live. Advance in the way of understanding. The word of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. Taste and see the goodness of the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, watch carefully how you live, not as foolish persons, but as wise, making the most of the opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand what is the will of the Lord. And do not get drunk on wine, in which lies debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and playing to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks always and for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Lord 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quote among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Here is the key point for us as we listen intently to this familiar line from John chapter 6. Jesus is telling us who he is by saying, I am. He is God the source of all life. And he is offering us his own body and blood for life of the world. In doing so, he's demonstrating, as he continues to demonstrate today, his great love. Flipping the pages ahead in John chapter 15, verse 13, our Lord Jesus says this, no one has greater life than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Yet that is what Jesus does on every altar throughout the world each day. He lays down his life for you and me. Every day, even in our world, just like God, there are people who risk their lives so that we can live and prosper. These are our first responders, our firefighters, paramedics, and police officers, and our servicemen and women serving all throughout the world. Many of them put their lives on the line each day, not knowing what to expect, so that others can be saved and go on to live. Jesus gives us his own body and blood, not just so that we can live in this world, but provides it for us so that we can have the opportunity for eternal life. When the people around Jesus began to quarrel and grumble, he responded, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. As I have pointed out to you before, my dear brothers and sisters, when Jesus echoes the words, amen, amen, I say to you, that is, in essence, a cue for you and me to sit up and listen because he's speaking. And in fact, even though the people were grumbling and questioning, how can he give us his flesh to eat? Jesus doubled down and he says, amen, amen, I say to you. For us as Catholics, reception of Holy Communion is 
important. How important? So important, Pope Pius X lowered the age of reception of Holy Communion and encouraged Catholics to receive Jesus frequently. However, to truly receive Jesus in the Most Holy Eucharist, one must be properly disposed and prepared. That is why frequent confession is necessary to free us from mortal sin. And yes, prayer is also necessary to prepare our hearts and minds before receiving Jesus in Holy Communion. In sports, there is a phrase we often hear, get your head in the game. The same can be said about our own spiritual life. We need to get our head in the game so that we can truly say this powerful word I'm going to mention, amen. What did St. Paul tell the people of Ephesus in his letter today? He wrote, watch carefully how you live, not as foolish persons, but as wise, making the most of the opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand what is the will of the Lord. Now, that word, what is the word we say after the priest or extraordinary minister says the body of Christ? It should be amen. It's not thank you, Father, or thanks be to God. It's amen. And that's important and significant. Well, you might say, Father, why, why does it matter? Because thanks be to God is what we do after we receive communion and we come back to our pews and we kneel down on our knees. That's when we thank God. Or after Mass, to make a prayer of thanksgiving. But the word is amen, and words have meaning. And the word amen, four letters, very simple, is very powerful. You know, you shouldn't thank me. I mean, during communion, that distracts it. If you want to thank me, thank me after Mass. I could never figure that one out. The body of Christ, thank you, Father. Couldn't figure that one out. The word amen, when we say that one simple word, we're acknowledging our belief. Amen, I believe. But secondly, in doing so, we're also recommitting ourselves to the faith. We're recommitting, as God recommits himself on the altar, every altar of the world, we are recommitting ourselves to God. Amen. And think about that. That's what we conclude our prayers with. Amen. I mean, most of the Mass, we don't say the word amen. We do it with the conclusion, the general intercessions. I think that's almost natural, but the word amen comes at the end of Mass. But the blessing, with the instruction to go in peace. The conclusion. We think of how we conclude our prayers. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, never shall be, world without end. Amen. The firm belief in what we just prayed. It's almost like a seal, a stamp. Amen. I believe. And when we say that word, my dear brothers and sisters, we shouldn't mumble it. Amen. Amen. That's what it sounds like, brothers and sisters. Amen. I believe. We need to be forceful. We need to say that word with conviction. We need to think about that word. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord gives us his own body and blood to give us strength to nourish us, to strengthen us for the journey ahead, to give us life. We need the Eucharist. We need Jesus. And when we say yes to God, we're professing our belief in him. I thought it was funny when I was over at RE, and I walked into the first, second grade room, and 
I don't know, Pat, if it was you or Chris, asked the kids, who am I? And one of the kids said, our father. And I go, well, I'm not the father. Who is the father? God. I said, oh, good, we got that clear. But we think about that, my dear brothers and sisters. We do his will, not our own. And we go back to Tuesday of this past week. The gospel reading was the account. How do we enter the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus said, one must become like a child. And children have this truly humble heart, and they trust. Our children trust us to feed and nourish them when they're infants to wipe their diapers, change their diapers, and so on. But Jesus did not say, act like children. He said, become like children. There's a difference. Model the humility and trust. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Say yes to God each and every single day. Say yes to him. I come to do your will. And that's hard. Because so often... Whose will do we try to do? Our own. And where does that get us? Off the track. Trust the Lord with humility and trust him with all our heart. You know, I always have a particular devotion to this particular gospel. And I've shared this with you before because I read this gospel. It was the gospel assigned for the day in which my mother was called home to the Lord. I anointed her all week. I prayed the Divine Mercy Chaplet. I sat by her bedside, along with fulfilling all the parish responsibilities that I had, going back and forth between concerts. I would go and spend hours by her bedside, and I could not figure out what she was waiting for until I returned to the parish on Friday morning, and I read that gospel. The same thing. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. And as soon as I said those words, the light bulb clicked. And so after hearing confessions after Mass, I immediately run to the nursing home. I celebrated Mass on one of those meal trays in her room. I gave her the body of Christ for the last time. In a few hours, she breathed her last, entering into eternal life. It was a reminder, my dear brothers and sisters, that Jesus is the bread of life. And that is why it is important for us to remain close to him each day. Yes, the teachings are sometimes hard. Hard to accept, hard to live. Sometimes we fall short, but that's why we have confession. But for those who accept them in faith, we'll find not just life, but God willing, eternal life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward as the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. The Father gives us his own son, his real food and real drink at this altar. We can ask him for all we need in Christ, the source of new life. For our Pope, our bishops, priests, and deacons who minister in the Eucharistic ministries, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For wisdom and foresight in the sharing of food in regions of need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For choirs, organists, musicians, and composers who help us praise God with beauty and joy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more frequent and reverent reception of the body and blood of our Savior, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish who are ill, whose illnesses are impacting them emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually, that they may find comfort and strength in communion with the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those visiting our parish family this weekend and for their intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who died in the hope of eternal life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of the holy sacrifice of the Mass being offered for the Sneeringer and Lawrence families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I also want to add to our prayer of the faithful this weekend, all students and teachers as they prepare to hit the books once again as we begin a new academic year. May you bless and strengthen them with wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of earth and altar, we unite our prayers to the intentions of the whole church, nourished and united by your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 699, I am the bread of life, 699. Drink of his blood and drink. 
drink of his blood. You shall not have life within you, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. I am the resurrection. I am the life. If you believe in me, even though you die, you shall live forever. And I will And I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. Pray, my brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while not in his body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and blemish sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, her blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, 
order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father, in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, and the sight of your divine majesty. So that all of us through this participation in the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, life, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant them share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Steve, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep my soul safe for eternal life. Body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. Christ. Please join in singing hymn number 656, Wisdom's Feast, 656. The Body of Christ. Sean. 
to the banquet of salvation. We eat the bread of teaching, drink wine of wisdom, are given here a taste of the kingdom. Together joined the greatest and the least. We all are one at wisdom's holy feast. Simple ones whose hearts are yearning, come and gain from wisdom's learning. Bread and wine she is preparing. Know her loving in the sharing. We eat the bread of teaching, drink wine of wisdom, are given here a taste of the kingdom. Together joined the greatest and we all are one at wisdom's the body of Christ. holy feet. The body of Christ. Enter with the body delight of and singing, for the her richness Christ. now is bringing the us this joyous celebration. The Eat and drink in jubilation. The body of Christ. We eat the bread the of, of teaching, drink wine of, of wisdom, Christ. are given here a taste of the kingdom. The Together join the, the greatest and the, the least. We all are one at the wisdom's She will feed our sweetest insight so that at this feast we all might be renewed, rejoice in flowing and abundant cups of knowing. We eat the bread of teaching, drink wine of wisdom, are given here a taste of the kingdom. Together join the greatest and the least. We all are one at wisdom's holy feast. Bread of angels she will give now Wine of heaven, come and live now. Hearts refreshed and spirits nourished at this holy table flourish. We eat the bread of teaching, drink wine of wisdom, are given here a taste of the King. Together join the greatest and the least. We all are one at wisdom's holy feast.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our announcements for the weekend, the Taco Sunday fundraiser, which was originally scheduled this weekend, is next weekend from 9 a.m. to 3. Our next First Friday movie night will be Friday, September 6 at 7 p.m. We'll be watching The Clifford, The Big Red Dog, perfect movie to get back into the school year, especially in about a month they get into the Scholastic Book Fair, so Clifford is very fitting. Also, don't forget at 3 p.m. today, being the third Sunday, we have our Teardrop Holy Hour in which we will gather to pray for our loved ones who have strayed, who have left the faith, where we have the opportunity to model the example of St. Monica as she prayed 17 years for her son, who eventually came around. And that's actually a telltale sign of what we should be doing, my dear brothers and sisters. You know, you can't force. You can invite people to the faith. You can't force. But she knew where the power and the force was, was in prayer. For so 17 years, she knelt down and she prayed at the kneeler for her son, Augustine. And so today we'll focus briefly on St. Augustine, the rebel child who came back into the church to become one of our great saints. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke them, we humbly pray. And you, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, throughout out the world seeking the broken souls. Please join in singing hymn number 829, God, whose giving knows no ending, 829. God, whose giving knows no ending from your rich and endless store. Nature's wonder, Jesus' wisdom, costly cross, grave shattered door. Gifted by you, we turn to you, offering up ourselves in praise. Thankful song shall rise forever, gracious donor of our 